And we're in Stellenbosch with René Desjardins from Canada. From Canada. From right. Winni well, working in Winnipeg, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Where's that? In the middle somewhere? It is in the middle. We are the middle province, okay. and Winnipeg is smack in the middle of Canada. Okay. So, prairie province, very flat. <laughs> so, René, what do you do professionally these days? So, I am an associate professor at the School of Translation at the University, at University de Saint-Boniface in mm -hmm. Winnipeg, Canada. And my areas of research interest, uh, expertise, um, so translation studies, obviously, mm -hmm. Canadian studies, social media, um, or the digital humanities, I guess, is now the more mm -hmm. commonly used term. Um, and I also dabble into a little bit of food studies. <laughs> okay, so you're really the complete millennial translation scholar. No, not that. <laughs> no, that's but, okay. but you're doing the different things that, yeah. that, that, that are... Cool. I mean, if days, you want to yeah? call it millennial or you want to call it transdisciplinary. No, cool, cool yeah. stuff. Okay, I'll take it. I'll take, I'll take cool. <laughs> okay. First, um, you're bilingual? Yes. So, so the languages that I, I research and translate into and out of are English and French, yeah. um, but I'm able to, to do some research work um, in Spanish and German. Like okay, I can read, good. Uh, yeah. But my speaking is a little bit. But rusty. you were brought up with both English yeah, and French, so you're the complete Canadian product. Yeah, okay. yeah, I am. Uh, I am. I think I might bleed maple syrup. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and in the translation classes that you teach, are you bringing in the social networking? Uh, yeah, digital I mean, everything as well. Yeah, I, we we have like the whole suite of courses. You know, the things like general translation, legal mm -hmm. translation, specialized translation. Um, but I think now everything that we're doing is mediated by the digital realm, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it's pretty challenging to set that aside. So the minute that we're working with a screen, I think the digital comes into uh, the equation. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think the, the minute that, uh, you know, we're working with, with screens and digital technologies, mobile technologies online, um, the question of, of you know, social media or websites is, mm. is inescapable. You've got a book out on this, right? Yeah, tell yeah. Us a, tell us about that. So it's called Translation and Social Media mm -hmm. in Theory and Training and in Professional Practice. Mm -hmm. um, and so some people tend to conflate, you know, translation and social media as like crowdsourcing or localization. Um, but the book takes the perspective of looking at user-generated content on social platforms. Mm -hmm. um, so how users are communicating multilingually and what that means for the theorization of translation, what that means for how we train translators, and what that means for professional uh, translators as well. So hold up a bit. What does it mean for the way we train translators? Um, well, I think that more and more, uh, well, especially with uh, the Canadian context, um, tr professional translators are being called to translate texts that are digitally born, right? Mm -hmm. uh, meaning that they've never had a sort of paper antecedent. Mm -hmm. And so what does that mean when you have hashtags? And what does that mean when something is embedded, um, you know, in a website? And so thinking about how we can train translators for those types of translation challenges. Surely a lot of that stuff is done by machine translation. No, actually, no. Um, my research uh, suggests that there's a lot of self-translation that's happening mm -hmm. on these social platforms, um, that a lot of uh, captioning work. So, for example, like on Instagram, um, government accounts that are trying to transmit, uh, you know, messages to, to constituents or stakeholders, uh, voters, um, tends to not work very well through machine translation because mm -hmm. of things like hashtags mm -hmm. um, or because the text is kind of bilingual. So yes, I mean, there, there are tools that are coming in, but what we're seeing in Canadian practice is that that's still done by humans. Um, and so there's, there's a, a need for training, but also mm -hmm. to use, or if there is machine translation in a social media context, how do we best use it, right? Yeah, okay. So, so is Canada a special case? Um, I don't I, know. Not many governments communicate through Instagram. Um, well, the, well the, the Canadian government is there in yeah. the sense that there are accounts like Parks Canada, Library and Archives. Mm -hmm. um, so they're different, you know, government departments. Um, also, our, our politicians okay, have to so be there. Just, yeah. So I don't know if Canada is a special case. But it also invests a lot in translation. It does. Well, so. we do have the Official Languages Act, which oh. I think immediately puts us in a 
a place of translation or in a need of translation. So the Official Languages Act says what? Uh, says, says that everything has to be in our two official languages, which is English and French. So for the whole territory of Canada. Yeah, anything that is um, in relation to the public sector. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Which, which is also, you know, being debated at a time with indigenous reconciliation. Um, so some people yeah, are... Yeah, so it's more than French and English. Yeah, so... so and I would tend to be favorable to having um, inclusion of heritage languages. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've got two other books in the pipeline. What are, yeah, what are so uh, these are still in the works. Um, but uh, at IATIS last year in Hong Kong, we had a panel uh, called When Translation Goes Digital. And when I say we, I'm referring to my colleagues, Claire Lassolin, who's in Paris, and Philippe Lacour, who's out of Brasilia. Mm -hmm. um, and so we decided that out of this panel, we would put together a co-edited volume, um, which will have pretty much the same title, When Translation Goes Digital. Mm -hmm. And so each of the contributors is looking at translation in the digital through different thematic lenses. So things like remuneration, translator visibility, mm -hmm. uh, you know, um, we even have a, a contributor working on uh, beauty vloggers on YouTube. So, you know, beauty right. influencers. So I guess that's another I cool... don't have much to do with that. But... <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and, and what's really cool about this project is that the geographic coverage is quite good. So we have contributors from Asia, we have contributors from Europe, we have contributors from North America. Mm. So I think that that's like really rich because it's not just focusing on one kind of geographic space. Who's your publisher? Uh, Paul Grave Macmillan. Okay, good. For all three? The um, ones so up, or for, my, for the book, uh, Translation in Social Media, that was with Paul Grave yeah. Macmillan, and then this co-edited uh, this co volume as well. And then the third project that is in the works is um, with, uh, was commissioned quite recently, um, so I don't know how much I can say about it, but it will oh. be on translation and food. Good, great. Yeah. Yeah. Another cool, cool topic. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah. Right. You know, we're doing everything in social media and it's all digital, and why are we producing paper books? <laughs> you know, I think, I don't know that this is true for the younger generations, yeah. Um, yeah. but I think that for generations that that have gone from paper to now the digital, there's a sort of nostalgia and comfort that comes with paper. Um, but I also think that it's just less demanding on the eyes okay. <laughs> to, to read paper. Oh, so you, you do read paper books? I do, oh, I, I, gave do. Them up I do. Yeah, I mean, a, I, a... I think the, the portability and mobility of e-books is fantastic. Yeah, um, and, and certainly environmental, you know, uh, benefits as well to having uh, electronic text. Uh, but I do prefer paper. But Great. I went <laughs> off the track there. I forgot the most. Im Did I ask you what were you doing when you were 22, 23, So 24? what was I doing when yeah, I was 22 sorry, I get or 23? This okay. Um, so I was just finishing my master's and starting my PhD mm -hmm. um, at the University of, of Ottawa in Ottawa, mm -hmm. Canada. Um, and working with uh, Salaba Salama and Marc Charon. They were my supervisor Good. and co-supervisor. Um, so what was your master's on? So I was always looking, I mean, master's and PhD, I was really interested in this idea of broadening translation. Okay, all right. Incorporating so. things like multimodality yep. and image, the visual. I was very interested with the visual. Have you worked as a translator? I have. Okay. I have been a freelancer and had my own little business up yeah. and going since okay. the age of 21. So I guess wow. I was doing that too when okay. I was 22, 23. So, yeah. um, I mean, I don't, I don't freelance as much these days just because of my my academic yeah. post um but i love translating i really do okay um so yeah so i have so was it a smooth transition you did the doctorate on this you... so i did ma and went straight into the phd yeah. um but for the last two years of my phd i was doing that uh part-time and i was working full-time as a Reviser and as part of an in house translation team at the Royal College of Physicians and Surgeons of Canada. Wow, that's a different thing. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so I was doing right, some medical so. translation. Okay. Yeah, so right. I, I always felt that this was really important as I was moving through my graduate work was to, to always have this kind of grounding in professional practice. Yeah. Um, it's not to say that people who have never practiced professionally can't have very valuable things to say about translation. But I think in Canada, or in the Canadian context, it's really helpful 
to see how translation is practiced and to have that lived experience and then bring that into the research. Sure. For me, anytime I'm theorizing something, I want to think about how that might have a certain applicability. I don't want to say in the real world because I think the academic yeah. world is the real world, but you know. <laughs> it's part of the real yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, but, so when I was 22, 23, I was already kind of in, in my graduate work and, but I've learned so much since then. <laughs> what kind of research do you think we should be doing? I think research... More, more of what you're doing, or do you see areas no, that, that think, need more development? I think research that we're passionate about. Which uh, I know that's kind of, the right answer. <laughs> which, I think well is, done. which I think is maybe a bit of a, of a cliche, or maybe it is a little millennial to say, um, but I, I think mm. people who aren't really invested in their topic, it comes across either in maybe, you know, sloppy methodology or half-heartedness in conference presentations. And in my experience, people who are passionate about what they're working on or if they're invested in sort of an activist, you know, yeah. capacity, then immediately there's this spark that is always there. Yeah. And I think it makes the work a lot less tedious. Does activism contradict empiricism? Sorry to throw that. No, in that's there. okay. I just have to think about it for a moment. I don't. No, when you did your your research, yeah. I mean, no, I, you, I did. You discover stuff that you didn't know while you're doing the yeah, research. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't. Are. I don't yeah, think yeah. that the two are mutually exclusive. I mean, certainly, right. having a more activist perspective or being engaged in a way that's more <laughs> more asserted, I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, I guess the concern there is an over bias that might skew, you know, how you interpret. Oh, I'm not worried but, about that. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think it's, I don't think the two are mutually exclusive. Okay, that's the right answer. <laughs> I don't know. The... Okay, Rene, thank you very, very thank much. You. Okay. Thank you. Okay, that was great.